Hi there! Do you want to learn Power Automate and simplify your workflows? In this video, I will share one of the lessons from my Power Automate module on my Udemy course. If you want to access the course, check the pinned comment below or become a channel member to unlock all the lessons. Let's get started. We are building this flow that sends a notification in a Teams message. But in the previous lesson, we just added myself as the recipient. And I mentioned that since this comes from a task management app and we have a list of approvers, we want to send to the approvers that are in that list. And this is the list that I also showed in the previous videos. Right now, my email is in that list. But for example, I can add a new approver. And in the moment that I add this approver, this person also needs to receive the notification. So I'm going to save. And now we have two approvers in here. And if I remove myself from here, then I should stop receiving the notification. This means that I need to lose the approvers from this list instead of just passing the email in here. So let's start building that. First thing is that we need to read from this list, the approvers list, and bring all the items. So we can create a new step here in the middle to load the data from SharePoint. Let's find the SharePoint connector that's in here and then find the action called get items that's in here, get items. Now I just selected, I need to select the site that in my case is called timesheet app and the list that I want to bring the data. In this case is approvers. Okay, this will load the whole list inside my Power Automate and I can use this data. We can run the flow to see what are the outputs of this connector. In case we don't want to continue the flow after this step, we can add another action here just to terminate the flow. Let's type here, terminate. This will be temporary, so we can start building the actions and testing it without sending the notification. The flow will stop at this point. And we can select the status. In this case, for example, I can put cancelled or failed or succeeded. Let's say cancelled. And you can use this in several parts of the flow in case you need to terminate because of some condition. But right now I'm just terminating the flow so we can execute and stop on this point. Let's test it and see how it runs. I'm going to test. Again, I'm going to test with a recent trigger, so I don't need to create a new item in the SharePoint list, in the tasks list. So I just selected the last run and click on publish and tests. And it will run with the very same task from before. It's publishing and now it run. As you can see, we received some warnings here before because we are just using get items. We didn't put a limit. So if this list had hundreds of rows it would bring, it was just warning us, depending on the occasion, it's fine. And now we can see that the flow run has been canceled because it's terminated in here and didn't run the last step. So it didn't send a notification on Teams. We can see that the trigger executed because an item was created. Then we run the get items. That brought us the approvers. We can see here in the outputs, we have the body. And here I can copy this and I can put in somewhere else for us to visualize. One second, because here is too small. So here is the output, the body. We can see that we have something called value. And inside it, we have an array with some items that in this case are two items. The first one has my email. And the second one has Clark's email. So here we have the two emails from the approvers. We just need to find a way to extract them and concatenate like this. So I want to extract the first one, put a semicolon, and then get the second one and put after it like this. So I need to put this somewhere in a compose action or in a variable and then pass this to the input of the post message in a chat or channel action. So it will send the notification to these two guys 
who are in the lists. And if you have three or four, it should get all of them. So see you in the next lesson. Do you want to watch the classes without any interruptions? By becoming a channel member or purchasing the course, you can watch ad-free and support the future of my content creation. Check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment to get started. See you in the next lesson.